we are going to be learning about a few principles of copywriting that we all need to keep in mind the moment a brief arrives on our desk. First of all, no, a copywriter does not know what he or she is going to write the moment they read a brief. Because copywriting is as much of an art as it is a science. And since it is a science, there are a few techniques that one needs to keep in mind when approaching a brief. Let's go over them. Number one, your ad should be absolutely clear. Your audience should have one clear takeaway after reading your copy. There should be no ambiguity about the meaning of your ad. For example, your product is the best clinics class for these very reasons. That's one clear key message. Or it could also be the fact that you are giving the customers the best deal that there is to offer. Your audiences should not be left with, what is this ad trying to say? Right? There should be one clear, distinct key message that the audience takes away from your ad. Next up, your ad has to make an impact. According to a Forbes research, you are exposed to anywhere between 4,000 to 10,000 ads in a day. Now imagine, if you are a copywriter who's adding one more ad to these 10,000 ads, you better make sure that your ad makes an impact. How do you do that? You do that like your ex kid with this ad. The length of your copy matters. And it also depends upon the objective and the medium of the copy. For example, if you are going to be placing this copy on a hoarding, where people are driving by at 60, 70, 100 kilometers per hour, they do not have a lot of time to consume your copy, right? So your copy shouldn't be more than six to eight words on a hoarding, right? Similarly, if you are going to be placing your copy in the newspaper, which people are going to be reading anyway, if your copy is well written, people will read it down to the last word. And if you are on Twitter, your copy wouldn't be more than 280 characters. Now that's something to think about. Now it goes without saying that creativity is an integral part of our profession, right? But here's something that one of my professors told me a long time ago, and it has stuck with me ever since then. If you can't say something different, say it differently. And this principle can help you create some wonderful, wonderful creative ads. Let's take a look at the Volkswagen ads, for example. At a time when all automobile manufacturers were only talking about wheels, suspension, horsepower, and other car features, Volkswagen said lemon. Volkswagen said think small. And these are the ads that actually revived a German company. Oh, fun fact, the copywriter who wrote these ads was actually a Jew. Remember this, if you are communicating in a saturated market, which I'm sure that you already are, you have to say something new, and you have to find a way to say it in a really different way. That is how your consumers will remember you, and that will help you create some amazing advertising with effective, creative messages. Now, it is really important to stress on action in your copy. The whole point of any ad is to get people to do something, right? It could be buying something from you, coming to your store, trying something out, subscribing to your service, anything. But it is the action that makes advertising so different from any other communication. And that's why your copy must be assertive. It must inspire people to take some form of action. How do we do that? We do that by using verbs in our copy. Verbs are essentially action words. Words like buy, come, hurry, subscribe, like, comment. These are words which inspire your audience to do some form of action. And whenever you have a specific action mentioned in your copy, your copy becomes very clear. So always, always remember to stress on the action. Now this is a really important point. You must understand your audience really well. Understand what are their fears, what are their desires. Put yourself into their shoes and think of how you can solve their problems, how you as a copywriter and how your product can help make their life easier. If you do that, you will always, always hit the bullseye with your copy. Do not hesitate to use colors and graphics over your words. Why? Because a picture speaks a thousand words. Human beings are attracted to colors and graphics a lot more than words. In fact, certain colors and certain shapes bring about a very specific reaction from the human mind. So that's why you should never hesitate to completely eliminate your copy or have very little of it. Like these examples. With the right use of colors, graphics, and words, you can effectively break clutter and grab your audience's attention and communicate the message that you want them to take away. Remember to stress on benefits more than the features. Features are in fact the qualities of your product and services. Whereas benefits 
are how those features will make your audience's life better. And that is what a lot more people are interested in. Instead of telling me that your MP3 player has 1 GB of space, which is a feature, tell me that it will score a thousand songs, which is a benefit. Instead of telling me that your cooking oil has orizinol and cortisol, tell me that it will help me reduce the cholesterol and that it will help me live longer. That is a key product benefit and it is easier to understand. Benefits are the main reason why people buy products. People don't buy a particular phone because it has a 16 megapixel camera, but they do buy it because it makes them look good. They do buy it because it will help them not miss out a single moment in their lives. So always remember, benefits over features. One way to do this is by asking the question, so what? For example, we could look at this ad by Mercedes-Benz. Instead of talking about the features of the RV, Mercedes instead chose to focus on the lifestyle benefits of the RV. How do you get to such an ad? It's simple. The moment your brief talks about the features, ask yourself, so what? How does this feature better my life? So instead of talking about cargo, increased storage space, air conditioning, the writer chose to ask, so what? And that's probably how they arrived at the headline, put more miles between you and your everyday. That is copy which is all about the benefit and so, so far away from the boring features. You must always write to relate and not to impress. Because what's the point of writing an impressive ad which doesn't lead to action? Let's take a look at these two sentences. Our market leading products alleviate the stress of pain management. Versus our services take the pain out of payroll management. The second sentence is so much easier to understand. It sounds human, it is simpler, and it communicates exactly what the product does. Compare that to the first sentence. That is technical, it uses big words, and no one really talks like that in real life, so it's not relatable. Now there's no harm in using technical language, big words, but what's the point if your message is getting lost in translation? Instead, keep it simple silly, and make sure that you're writing to relate and not to impress. Now remember, these principles are not second stone. And using these principles may or may not guarantee success. But here's one thing that they will definitely do. They will help you out when you're lost and you do not know where to go next when it comes to cracking the brief.